And now to the most dangerous man in the Albanese government, in my opinion, because this is getting ridiculous. I want to show you something. A list of the blunders of Energy and Climate Change Minister Chris Bowen. And as you watch Ask, don't you think he should be stopped? Sacked? Thrown out? I'm going to show you just a few of the promises and schemes Chris Bowen has announced that have totally flopped. There's, of course, this promise. We've released the most comprehensive economic modelling that any opposition has ever released, reducing power prices by $275, $275 by 2025. The reality, we in fact got the opposite of electricity bills that just kept rising. There was this promise. What we've got to do is build a green hydrogen industry. What we will do is ensure that we can be a very strong supplier to the rest of the world. The reality, Australia's biggest investor in green hydrogen, Andrew Forrest, last month admitted this green gas was just too expensive and he cut 700 jobs. There was this promise to run the new Curry Curry gas plant on green hydrogen, 30% of that at first. What we're doing today is ensuring that Curry Curry is at the centre of the hydrogen revolution. We'll be working with Snowy Hydro to ensure 30% and then 50% and then 100% in keeping with the best practice. The reality, the plant operators then said it was impossible. We would run the plant on natural gas instead. Another dud Bowen promise, a billion dollars to make companies like SunDrive make solar panels right here. We welcome our SunDrive making the most efficient solar panel in the world here, on this site. The reality, SunDrive this month cut staff, replaced its boss, said it was changing direction to invent, not manufacture, panels. On it goes, Chris Bone's extraordinary record of failure. Like this promise early this month to get more charging stations for electric cars. Like Am This money that we're announcing today will support Ampol in rolling out 200 new charges by 2025. And this is key. Later, Ampol said, well, actually, no, it's not possible to do that after all. And now Bowen is insisting nuclear power stations be banned for being too costly and taking too long to build. Nuclear energy is slow to build and extraordinarily expensive to build. I mean, uh, nuclear reactors can take 20 years to build, and that's before you've built a regulatory system, mm. built a workforce. For this week, China approved 11 more nuclear reactors and says it'll build them in just five years, not 20. Joining me is Nationals frontbencher Barnaby Joyce, the former Deputy Prime Minister. Barnaby Joyce, thanks for joining me. This is not a joke anymore. Chris Bowen is a proven incompetent, risking billions on dud schemes. And now he's going around saying, no, we've got to keep banning nuclear power because it'll take 20 years to build a, one of these things, these nuclear generators, and cost too much. China has just proved it can do it in five years. This guy has got to go. Well, he is... He's formidable in being hopeless. There is no doubt about it. And if you look at his previous iterations, when we had tens of thousands of people who made their way to Australia illegally under his watch, and now he's dancing and prancing around, telling her he he lives in a different universe. He, he sort of all of the electricity saved, solved. It's all it's all better. The fact that these packets turn up, little envelope with a window in it, and it's your power bill, and it's going through the roof. He just seems to be it just denies, denies it. He, he's, a, he's a bill denier. He's a bill denier. We climate denies. He's a bill denier, a bill denier. <laughs> and then he, the other day I said, well, if, if your plan was working so well, we'd have all these major manufacturers moving their manufacturing to Australia, Krups, Siemens, BMW, Boeing, they'd be all lined up because Chris Bowen, you know, that, that sage, that genius, has, got a, has found how to make intermittent power Though it's never worked anywhere else to drive an industrial economy, he's going to make it work here. But, of course, they're all just running for the door. Barnaby, I don't want to exaggerate, but, this, but what I've just outlined is an astonishing record of failure. And what gets me, as I think a lot of Australians don't quite realise how bad it is, because he speaks with such utter certainty, even when everything's collapsing around his ears. <laughs> That's the amazing he's, thing. He's the Bhagwan Bowen. indomitable ignorance. He's, he's the... <laughs> He's a Bhagwan Bowen. He's a Bhagwan Bowen. All he needs to do is assume the lotus position at the dispatch box and and and, and tell us. It's just, it's completely yeah. nonsensical rubbish. Um, but he acts. Well, the scary thing is, there are times, not all the time, but there are times. I think he actually believes it. Well, I think you know they say that in life, if you can fake conviction, 
uh, you've got it made. But uh, in politics, if you can f fake utter, utter, uh, you know, conviction, uh, honestly, that, that is where you really got to watch out. Uh, Barnaby, the Prime Minister two days ago made this joke to farmers, of all people, at the AgriFutures Rural Women's Award Gala. And this is after banning live sheep exports, which, of course, cost a lot of farmers a lot of money. Uh, when uh, we had dinner, beautiful Australian beef, uh, not the live export, the, uh, we made sure it was dead. Dear me. Barnaby, have you finished dear, laughing dear here? Me. Look, and didn't, didn't the clown realise that it, the Indonesia, Indonesia like... Uh, the, the future Indonesian president who is here in Australia this week is the biggest recipient of live cattle from our nation. We supply the protein contents for Jakarta in the Baxel Balls, one of the fundamental parts of their diet. And one of the biggest mistakes we have made diplomatically in this nation was the overnight cessation banning of the live cattle trade. And whilst this person's here, he, he is so witless that he, he must have thought that it was a hilarious joke. It was the most inopportune joke at the most inopportune time in front of the wrong audience. Uh, and of, obviously, every live cattle producer is now sitting up going, these clowns are going to do it again. They're going to just overnight shut down our industry. They've shut down the live sheep trade. That put, puts under pressure the, the cattle transport trade. We have a look at what's happening in this this crazy place called the ACT, where they've basically banned race, the racehorsing in, industry. They don't believe, believe in the Melbourne Cup. Um, they put under threat rodeos. They put under threat everything from polo to rodeos to the live cattle, live sheep. They live in this sort of, you know, once you go into the inner suburbs, this is anthropomorphic principle where every person's an animal and every animal's a person. And where that ends up is people get treated like animals. Now, um, this is really opened up a view into exactly where this Prime Minister's off to. And if I was in the live cattle trade, I would really be uh, on the balls of my toes after hearing that. Interesting news this afternoon. I mean, you and I have complained a lot about ABC bias. I don't think it's ever been worse. The managing director of the ABC, David Anderson, this afternoon announced he was stepping down just a year after being reappointed. He's got years to go on his contract. But he's stepping down just months after Chairman Kim Williams got appointed, came in and said the ABC had to tackle its bias. Now, both men today said nice things about the other, as if there's no conflict between them at all. Uh, well, we'll see about that. But what do you think now needs to be done with an organisation that seems irredeemably broken by its bias? Well, first of all, you, the taxpayer, you're paying about $1.1 billion a year, $1.1 billion a year, for an organisation, a publicly funded organisation that just seems intent on only talking to a very small part of the Australian population. Now, I don't mind that they've got left-wing commentators. That it, Knock yourself out. That's fine. But you must have right-wing ones as well. Now, here's a test. Here's a test. Um, you know, riddle me this. Who is the right-wing commentator in the whole of that taxpayer-funded organisation that's supposed to represent all of Australians? Name me one. Uh, they used to have a guy called Switzer who was on Radio National Between the Lines. He was one. He's gone. So um, who's, well, right who, who's, the, who's the counterbalance? Who's the counterbalance? There, there is none. And so they fish from this smaller and smaller pond. Their ratings, you see it on radio, just going through the floor. Regional... ABC is going all right. We're not, you know, they should have two ABCs. But the Ultimo, that's the suburb where the head office is, Ultimo in Sydney, the Ultimo culture is not only talking to an incredibly small group of people on your dime, but they're incredibly unsuccessful. Their, their ratings are tanking. Are people leaving them to go to online platforms or leaving them to go to... To Sky, you go around the countryside now, and overwhelmingly, people say, "Yeah, no, I watch, I watch Sky. I, I've given up on the ABC, and the ABC's done it to themselves." You, you, they start their fir first line, and you can say, "I could turn the volume down. And I'll tell you everything else they're going to say right now." It is com it's completely and utterly predictable. It is. I don't think uh, its ratings have been crashing. Its relevance has crashed. Uh, its bias is. Well, out of control now. It's staff. It's a staff collective. They need a manager. I think shares Kim Williams' 
vision of being unbiased. Yeah. I think I'm whistling in the wind here, Barnaby, but a man's allowed to dream. Oh, good luck. Thank you good so luck. much for your time. Good luck. <laughs> good, good luck. You're welcome.